So we've actually talked about a bunch of Masaki Yuasa movies in recent memory, because Masaki Yuasa is really productive lately. So much output. Yeah, and really good. And if I had to describe Masaki Yuasa uh, in terms of like the kinds of works I expect, off the wall, kind of weird, little spacey. Like That's kind of the way where I'd put it. And Night is Short, Walk On Girl, does not disappoint. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so hold on. I'm trying to bring something up, which is an interesting thing that I learned, only at the end of this movie, when after the credits, Masaki Yuasa comes out to speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so this is what I learned, right? So there is a person whose name is Tomihiko Morimi. And Tomihiko Morimi uh, is an author, right? And... They are the author of uh, Eccentric Family, Eccentric Family, Tatami Galaxy, Night is Short, Walk on Girl, something called Penguin Highway that's probably amazing, Adventures of a Saintly Slacker, which sounds amazing, and 2016, something called Night Train, which sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, everything that they've written sounds amazing, and the things, the only, I, my only experience of their work, their novels are the anime adaptations, right? So Eccentric Family was not animated by Masaki Iwasa, but Tatami Galaxy and uh, Night of Short Walk on Girl were both written by the same author, the original novels, and animated by the same people. And there seems to be a trend that at least these things are linked in subtle ways in the anime adaptation. Right. So Rim, see, after seeing th that thing after the credits, I said, well, I feel like I'm not going to be able to do a show on this... Uh, this Night is Short Walk on Girl, unless I've seen at least some Tatami Galaxy. So I went home. I've seen now two episodes of Tatami Galaxy. And I do plan to watch it all. In Tatami Galaxy, within the first minute, I see that Tengu Chin guy. Literally, that character is just right there at the start, right? The main two characters of Night is Short Walk on Girl are crook slightly so, but are also the main two characters of Tatami Galaxy. The... Minor character in Night of Short Walk on Girl, the demon in the in the the book. Yeah, the the the, the used book right. god. Yes, a crooked, a little bit more than slightly version of that character is a very main character of the Tommy Galaxy. Uh, the art style is basically identical. The mood is very similar. The plot is not so similar yeah they're not they're not redundant just you know you think oh that was all the same character just the same thing no it's not the same thing at all uh they're two separate works they're originally two separate novels right uh it's just that because the same animation team was adapting two works from the same author that are have some similarities they you know kept some character designs and some moods and some things um, but from two episodes, I can already tell that Tatami Galaxy is fantastic, but we're not renew re renewing Tatami Galaxy. I'm just letting you know that uh, I feel like it's hard to fully review one of these things without knowing about the other because there's so much right togetherness going yep. on here. But at the same time, I cannot stress enough, Walk on short, walk, The Night is Short, Walk On Girl is... 100% watchable in a vacuum. Yes, either one of these things stands alone if you were to watch them independently, but I, to fully grok either one, I think you need to experience both. So I would actually recommend uh, just go see this movie. It does. I don't think it matters which one you see first. No, I mean just you, like stop listening to Geek Nights right now and just go see this that movie. That would be a great use of your time. Because this movie is one of the better anime movies I've seen in a long time. I went into it knowing literally nothing about it except who directed it. Yeah, I, d I think it's even better than uh, the other Yuasa one we saw with the I think so. with the vampire dog. But that might be because the vamp what was the vampire one dog? Lou Over the Wall? Yeah, Lou Over the Wall. I think it's better than Lou Over the Wall. Maybe that's just because Lou Over the Wall is more of a children's movie. Yep. So <laughs> and I'm an adult. If and I this is not a children's movie. It begins with people getting blasted. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and it... it it's hard to describe what this movie is about without either really spoiling it or getting really, really sort of philosophical. Because it, it the, is very philosophical. The plot is expansive in scope and covers probably 500% more ground than you expect it to. Right. Well, basically, the way to summarize it best is that this is a girl and it's one night in her life that we're experiencing. Yep, she's right? on the cusp of becoming an adult. Her it friend's is, getting married. It's a, it, the, the night begins at this wedding that she's attending. Uh, and 
She goes on after the wedding, other pe- you know, she goes out to drink and starts partying and the the night becomes this big adventure, right? Uh, but in that like time dilated way that nights like that yes. when you're young feel like right. they last a lifetime. Right. So in this night, there are four seasons, right? And I think he said the book was divided into four seasons mm-hmm. uh, and they sort of compressed the four seasons into one night in the movie. Uh, I haven't read the book, obviously, it's in Japanese. I don't think it's translated. Uh, and I think it might be be getting translated, though. I think I did read something somewhere that they're working on publishing these novels in English. Anyway, I would read them. Yeah, I would read them. Uh, but the Four Seasons, right, it sort of starts in, I think it's, it's a start in, yeah, it starts in spring because it ends in winter, right? So that's, the, you know, that, that wedding part uh, and the, the parties soon after that are the spring. Then there's the summer part, and think you everything gets hot, Right, there's an ice kotatsu because they're all melting. Yeah. Right, they go to the the night book fair, like you know the cicadas. It's really right the hot times. Then there's then there's fall, and there starts to be stuff happening at the school, and people are getting cold. But I guess, and then at the end, it's winter and everyone's sick. Right, uh, and that's sort of the flow of this this one lo- epic long adventurous night uh, that goes through these four seasons, uh, and. Crazy stuff happens. And if I really had to try to explain what it's about on a high level, like it's it's that feeling when you're young and you haven't really decided what you want to do yet in your life, and you're sort of you're just entering the adult world and you're starting to do the things that adults do, and everything feels very important. Very minor things feel like they're the most important things in the world. And it follows someone through, like, experiencing a night like that. Like those nights we used to have when we were young, like at RIT, wandering around at night, mm-hmm. fighting with sticks and whatever. Yep. But it it's also... very surreal. But it simultaneously has this long-running theme about how the exact same night is very different, even for the people who had the exact same experience, based on their state of mind and how they feel about the situation. Mm-hmm. Like, multiple people have the same experience, and they all see it completely differently because of the state of their own heart and mind. And you see this illustrated in so many different ways, it'd be hard to catalog them. Like, the clocks literally are moving faster for the old people than for the young people. Yep. Things like that. Like, the school festival, which I can only describe as Kill La Kill, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that festival like bunker where they're running it, it evokes how it felt to be running the RIT Anime Club back when I was in college compared to now as an adult, the reality of what running the RIT Anime Club was really like. Right. So ba- not, you know, the main character is the, the girl, right? Who has, like, we keep saying the girl, like she has no name. It's, it's just the girl. It's literally the girl. There's the girl, the guy, the, the, the characters. So the are, other characters, some of them have names, right? So but she's just walking on. She's just going from moment to moment. The world's sort of passing her by, and she's right. interacting with things for right. the hell of it. These she- other characters, though, all have threads, right? And it's like everyone's thread gets resolved at some point, usually tied up with some other character. And she's sort of almost a catalyst. Like, as she's passing through the world, all everyone else's stories keep merging with hers and then splitting off again and then merging with each other. Yeah, it's like this. there's a character who's, like, in the beginning, right? And, like, the very opening scene, the, the guy who doesn't change his underwear... And then he, <laughs> Katsu. and then he goes away. You don't see him for a while, and then later on he comes back, and he's real important. Yep. Right. Uh, the only other character besides girl who who is sort of there the whole time is guy who is sort of in love with her from afar and keeps chasing her and keeps getting caught in the wake of her adventures, but not really catching up to her. And it, you know, coincidentally... He bumped- feels a little bit like a Skojo person. Like, in terms of the way, <laughs> the way Skojo that was... That doesn't mean anything to anyone who's nope. listening. A friend of ours. I guess a lot of the characters in this evoke not the details of the lives of our own friends, but the feeling about those people when they were similarly young and having these experiences. Like, being young and running the anime club and being young and pining after a girl that you know. Like, it's... It's all those feelings and encapsulates what it felt like to be 19 and full of vim and vinegar and gin. Right. Also, there is a lot of alcohol flowing this entire thing. Hemingway and the girl's superpower is that she can drink an infinite amount of alcohol. There's a very important (laughs) drinking contest and she just keeps going. Yup. Uh, there's a lot of eating and a lot of food. There's a scene where oh, the hot nave. That nave scene. The hot nave, which is literally like a lava nave. <laughs> uh, 
you know, this and you know, at the same time that you've got sort of this, you know, serious philosophical thing and these character threads, it is wacky and cuckoo bananas. Right in terms of like the you know in a, in a Misaki Yuasa way, and it just keeps going. It just keeps moving. Like it never pauses. The if only you've seen other... like the Misaki Yuasa episodes of uh, Adventure Time, Adventure Time, or what was the Space Dandy? Yeah, it's it's wacky like those very often. They're like. There's so we could if we did a final thoughts episode where we talked about the details of this movie, it could go on for hours. Mm. But what it, the other thing it does that reminds me there's an Amer- there's a movie, a live action movie called Punch Drunk Love that actually does the same thing at least for a portion of its run. It never pauses. Like it never gives you a break. It never like pauses to reset or like to establish. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going as fast as possible, covering so much more ground than you possibly expect. And then it ends. Yeah, the pace of this is really, really fast. And I, at at the start of the movie, it accelerated so fast. I felt like I wasn't really cat. I felt like I was missing something, right? But no, I wasn't missing anything. It's just it was going fast and only giving me the minimum of what I needed to know. And then later on, you know, things filled in. Things came around a second time, a third time, and I realized no, I didn't miss anything. They're just you. They're just pushed it to the limit in terms of information they can give you, right? So that you can catch it all and comprehend everything, but they can cram it all into the time they have in this movie before it's over. I think my favorite moments, without spoiling, are, like, number one is actually early on when all the different drinking parties sort of converge with each other. Well, I mean, just when he, they learn the dance from the young oh, people. The and, then, dance. and then the old the people. The fucking sophist dance. They, go, they end up at the sophist club where these kids are doing this weird they seem to be in a cult and they do the sophist dance. Then they go to some old people and they do the dance and the old people are like, oh, it's the sophist dance. We used to be in the sophist club. We started the sophist club. It's exactly and that start- situation that really happens. Like when Scott and I and a bunch of us ran into the current generation of like the RIT anime club and they're like, yeah, we run the RIT anime club. We're like, son, let's talk about the RIT anime club. We ran that shit. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Now we're old. <laughs> it's This movie is phenomenal mm-hmm. and I, I i am hesitant to use that word about movies usually but i would call this movie utterly phenomenal a, it is a must-see anime movie like if you haven't yet watched other shows that we've said are good that you should watch or other movies that you should watch just watch this one first before you watch anything else 